What is going on beautiful people? My name of course is Logix. Welcome back to another NBA 2K Mobile video on the channel today. We've got the Shot Clock Challenge for you. I'm very, very excited to bring this to you. This is of course with Devin Booker, the brand new Trio's Moonstone card. And uh, yeah, it's the first one of the season for the Shot Clock Challenge. Now, unfortunately, there is no face cam for this one. You know how it goes. Unfortunately, I've ended up having another mishap with the recording equipment. Probably gonna have to get things sorted out eventually and uh yeah until then i'll have to find an alternative but of course if you are new to the channel i recommend subscribing if you do enjoy the video smash the like button comment your thoughts down below and if you hit that notification button that bell button that way you're never going to miss one of my uploads big shout out to 2k of course for making this one happen we did pretty well i uh, i mean i don't want to spoil it but I'd say maybe it's going to get progressively more difficult. I would expect that to be the case as you end up going through the different tiers and levels to this. But uh, yeah, I mean, in comparison to, say, the full court press, I do find this one a lot more of a, a lot more of a trouble because you start to second guess yourself a lot. You end up going through and uh, clicking one and then you click the other to try and match it. And then, yeah, you just end up losing trail. And uh, next thing you know, you do what I do which is just frantically click it until you find uh, something that remotely looks close. I think one of the biggest uh, problems, especially when you're trying to use the memory game, is uh, when you get cards that are of the same theming. So say it's a certain tier, it could be Aquamarine, for example. And uh, for some reason, you're just not paying attention to the player in particular, but instead the uh, card around it. So say it's got a ruby or it's got a diamond, a pink diamond, for example. You're going to be looking at that to try and say, okay, well, the edges are that color. So therefore, you know, it makes sense to end up doing that. But overall, I'd say this is pretty good. And I like the way the layout is on this one. It's nice to see that they've uh, switched around the layout a little bit for each round. There are 15 rounds in total. Obviously, if you have coins uh, left over, coins, I should say, more time. If you have time left over and you get to the end, you can use that time to get a few more rewards along the way, which I'm not against. I do really like that. But uh, yeah, overall, it was going really well. We haven't spent too much to start this one off and we're already into round seven. So we're just on the uh, fringes of halfway here. And as you can see, I start to get into that classic panic where I'm matching the tier cards, but I'm not paying attention to the player. I find you the best strategy for me, and I don't know if it's just me, it might be for other people as well, is always trying to hopefully get that first hit like straight away. So say if you get an Aquamarine player and another Aquamarine player, uh, and then you're onto a winner. Um, but the best strategy I think overall now saying it is probably trying to find the collectibles and get those matched up first. I think it's so much easier to match a collectible in the early rounds in comparison to a player. Because certainly the players, as I say, they're going to double up in terms of the tiers. And that's where it's going to go downhill. So usually I try and look for, say, uh, the Day of the Dead uh, collectibles in this one. Or, of course, the gear keys. It's nice that there's a clear dif differentiation. Can't even pronounce my words today. Between the standard and, of course, the elite gear keys. And obviously if there is a card that has some sort of theme into it, for example, if it's the finals theme, you can usually tell quite quickly and to remember where that is. I think it's all about muscle memory in a lot of ways. But overall, with the seconds ticking down, as you can see, we managed to clear that round with about two seconds there. I sped up the gameplay a little bit because obviously having to re-record this, uh, it's, it's difficult to commentate on. But I did start to get on a roll here. As you can see, I matched the player up straight away, was really happy about it, then found the gear keys. And then I was like, oh, I remember there was a collectible somewhere. I think that's always my strategy. As I said, if you can hunt down the collectibles and the gear keys, uh, maybe the push-ups, the power-ups, whatever it may be, you're onto a winner for certain. Otherwise, it all goes a little bit south and you start to get in a bit of a panic. But nevertheless, we were running out of uh, time on this one. As you can see, the clock was going down and it was starting to get a little bit panicky, but we prevailed. We kept on going and I think it got to a point where we were like, we know we're going to have to spend a little bit more because we're in like round 11 now, but we're at least getting to the point where we're so far into it, we couldn't let go. And uh, yeah, we ran out of time, unfortunately. We ended up picking up some more. And uh, I think overall, we had just enough coins to cover this entire shot clock challenge. Now, I'm not going to say that it's not going to get more difficult throughout the season. I certainly do think that. I think eventually it's going to get to a point where maybe it's not enough compared to what it is currently. And I, I fully don't 
dispute that and I think that will be the case. But right now, as it's the first one, it's probably the best chance you've got to really get to the end depending on what your spending is. But yeah, I was getting a little bit uh, worked up with this one because as you can see, it falls. I fall into the trap again where I second guess where all the cards are. I kept on seeing this themed card in this round and I just kept avoiding him. It was like I knew he was there, but for some reason I was so set in my ways to find the normal base tier cards that I ended up leaving him till last, even though he was a fiend. But we had one second left on the clock. We pulled it off. We jumped into round 13, and of course the placement was kind of useful. If you, as I say, if you end up getting lucky, and the first two you pick are the match, you usually start the round really strong, and then you end up finding your rhythm. But if you're like me, and uh, you don't do that, you're going to be sort of scrambling, and I certainly scrambled, there's no doubt about it. It was fortunate there was enough different themed cards in here for me to start to get a rhythm, but as you can see, we were a little bit low on the coins. We had just about enough to buy another batch of seconds, and uh, yeah, we kind of needed it. We found that Jordan finally. We ended up picking up the gear keys, which was fantastic, and uh, then we found the Elite, and then we was able to get the players and the collectibles. So, we're into round 14. It's crunch time. We had about 50 odd seconds on the clock, a little bit more to be precise, but it's, you know, we were doing all right. We were finding our rhythm quite quickly. Again, I was getting caught out by those cards that seem to look so similar. And when you're not staring at the player because you're panicking about that clock on the left hand side, you're really starting to worry. Now, what's funny is when I started this, I, for some reason, I was, I kept saying, oh, I don't know how many rounds there are. There's 15 rounds. It's actually there in the bottom left. But for some reason, I just I wasn't I wasn't picturing it in my head. But hey, could we get down to a point where we finish this shot clock challenge without running out of time? That was the question. You're going to find out the answer because I was panicking at this point. I thought, no, I need to do it. I need to do it before the timer goes and I need to survive this. I can't guarantee, but it's not always going to work out as clean as that. But there you go. We ended up getting him. Mr. Devin Booker himself. I was really over the moon. But what's funny is I started going through my cards and I was like, where is he? Why does he not appear here? Because once he appears the first time, he does not appear for the rest of the rewards. Like when you've got to check him, he's not there. So I had a panic. I was like, oh no, wait, I completed it, but he's disappeared. We ended up having three seconds left, as I said. If you have any overtime on the... Uh, over time being, you know, more time, you actually can continue and try and go again. But hey, I went back to my team, I checked it out, and uh, luckily enough, Mr. Devin Booker went in and he appears. So magical. If you enjoyed, smash the like button, subscribe if you're new here. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you in the next one. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll be back with face cam once I figure out my equipment and uh, it will be good. Anyway, ta-ta, adios, bye-bye.